Welcome back to my series explaining each of the parts of a computer in plain English to help new PC builders better understand where to start. In this video, we'll be covering the motherboard. The motherboard is fairly simple, but it has a few key things that you'll need to consider. Let's dive right into it. The motherboard is basically where all the different parts of your computer connect and talk to each other. It's a big sheet of PCB or printed circuit board with a bunch of different ports and plugs built into it. In the CPU video, we spoke about the CPU socket. If you haven't watched it, it's in the top right corner right now. This is where the CPU connects to the motherboard and the rest of your computer. That's the CPU socket is pretty central on the motherboard. It's the square shaped thing that you're seeing now. Remember to find a motherboard with the correct socket type for the CPU that you'll be buying. Again, if you have questions, reference the previous video I made about the CPU appearing in the top right corner now. Just below the CPU socket will sometimes be a slot for NVMe or non-volatile memory express storage. This is a kind of drive that you can plug directly into your motherboard for increased speed and a smaller form factor. This storage tends to be pretty expensive relative to hard drives and uh, 2.5 inch SSDs, and in my opinion the upgrade over normal SSDs is not worth it for most people. I'll cover more about storage in a later video. If it's not appearing in the top right corner now, it should be soon. Just below that NVMe slot is the PCIe slot, where you'll use to plug in your graphics card and other uh, significant components. The graphics card usually goes in the top slot here because that slot usually supports the most bandwidth, which will get the most power out of your GPU and translated to the rest of your computer. You can use additional PCIe slots to connect things like Wi-Fi cards, which you'll need if your motherboard doesn't have a Wi-Fi connection. You can also use it for improving audio, uh, or I even use mine as an extra ethernet port since I had a power surge here and it fried one of the ethernet ports built into my motherboard, so I had to replace it. Uh, just to the right of the CPU socket are usually vertical slots for installing RAM. Again, this component was the subject of another video, so check the link if you'd like an in-depth explanation on that. RAM can operate in dual channel mode, which gives your computer access to more RAM and effectively more processing power. If your motherboard has two RAM slots, that's easy, just install RAM in both slots and you should have dual channel RAM right away, assuming it's supported by the board. Again, you'll have to check spec sheets to make sure that everything is compatible and that you have all the specs that you want. If you have four slots, you'll want to check your motherboard's manual to find out what arrangement to put your RAM in for dual channel mode. On mine and the PC behind me, it's using slots 1 and 3, um, but again, check your manual just to be sure. All these ports that you see covered in aluminum are your I.O. or input-output ports. These will align with a slot on your case and will let you plug in things like your keyboard, your mouse, any audio devices you might have into your computer. Anything with USB, uh, you can also use display, um, but you should be running display through your graphics card. Anyway, this is where you can connect things to your computer peripherals mainly. The other ports on your computer are used for connecting things like power, data, and the on and off switch from your case to your computer via the motherboard. I'll go over these ports in detail in the actual computer build video, uh, which will be coming very shortly. The size of your case will depend pretty heavily on the size of your motherboard. Some cases will support multiple sizes of motherboard, but they're often designed with one size in mind. From smallest to largest, the sizes of motherboard are Pico ITX, Nano ITX, Mini ITX, Micro ATX, Standard ATX, and E or Extended ATX. Larger boards will usually offer more options for expansion, like more RAM slots or PCIe slots. Unless you're purposefully building a small form factor PC, anything including micro, standard, and E-ATX should have enough options for an entry-level build. If you know that you're going to upgrade in the future, having standard or E-ATX will give you more flexibility to do that in the future. I personally think micro ATX PCs look really cool and can probably be enough for an entry level build if you're targeting 1080p and some 1440p gaming. That's exactly the kind of PC I'll be building for my friend uh, since that works well with his budget and his goals. I have a standard ATX motherboard that gives me enough room to use a couple extra P PCIe slots in the future if he'd like to. The name of the game with motherboards is really compatibility. Check and double check again to make sure that your parts are all going to work with your motherboard and vice versa. 
My philosophy is to get a motherboard that fits your main components like your CPU and GPU. If you're really on a tight budget, go for less features and a smaller size, and if you're looking for a longer upgrade path in the future, get ready to spend a few more bucks. As always, I recommend using PCPartPicker.com to make sure that all your parts will be compatible. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but I've used them for all the builds that I've done, and they are super helpful. In terms of brand, motherboard manufacturer is not terribly important. Just make sure to read the reviews and make sure it's reliable or see what people have complained about in the past. That pretty much does it for the motherboard video. Coming up next is Random Access Memory, or RAM. We've gotten through most of the complex technical stuff now, the rest should feel pretty easy. You can check out the rest of the videos in this series if you want to keep learning about components and how to build a PC. Thanks so much for watching to the end of this video, let me know what you thought in the comments below. Uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this, and I will see you in the next video.